Hey guys, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 bringing to you another edition of the Batwoman Season 1 review series. And today I'm going to be talking about Episode 10. Now, before I mention the name of the episode, yeah, don't let the title fool you or mislead you. My reaction was the same when I learned what this episode was called and I thought the title was pretty stupid, but the episode itself was actually pretty damn good in my opinion. Today's episode I'm going to be talking about, which is episode 10, is called How Queer Is Everything Today? <laughs> so as we saw at the end of the Crisis crossover event, all of the Earths have fused together as one single Earth, calling it Earth Prime, so that means all of the heroes are living under one roof and we're going to see lots of different changes that have been made to this new earth so everybody's old lives has been erased nobody remembers anything except the paragons who are part of the crisis event so much of this episode deals with the fallout from the aftermath of alice's murder of Catherine hamilton kane during the mid-season finale back in episode eight so we see that jacob kane remains in jail charged with his wife's murder while Mary has poured all of her energy into his defence and ignoring her own grief at the same time. While we also see Kate is still struggling with her Batwin identity and juggling the Alice issue while trying to find some measure of peace. And it is going to be very interesting to see what other changes have been made to this new Earth and especially where Batwoman's show is concerned. And there is a little twist at the end which will take everybody by surprise but I will get to that momentarily so let's get right into it let's talk about episode 10 and I'm not even going to repeat the name of the title because it's pretty stupid and I barely even said it the first time around with a straight face but you guys know what it's called enough said about the title let's get right into it so the episode kicks off with Batwoman driving on her new motorcycle. This is the first official time that we have seen Batwoman since the events of the Crisis crossover event and I'm digging the new cow as well. Very comic book accurate if I do say so myself and over the intercoms we see Batwoman thanking Luke for the new motorcycle conveniently days before her birthday and she's chasing after a runaway train full of passengers. She manages to stop the train, but the grappling hook she uses snaps away, and a handsome GCPD officer named Sam Bradley, who as Vespa Fairchild later calls, has Chris Evans vibes. Yeah, anyway. He saves her, which leads to them getting photographed and spread around the city. Kate gets annoyed about the press shipping and slam, especially considering the fact that she's gay. Yeah. <laughs> Kate and Luke visit the train and find a piece of technology that could remotely hack the train. Everyone in Gotham suddenly gets a mass text of a person using a dog bit emoji ordering the city to pay up. The same hacker then hijacks the mayor's press conference which leads Luke to worry that they could be targeted next. Kate convinces Luke to turn their internet back online and find the hacker's location. Batwoman finds the hacker's location just as Sophie is interrogating all of the men inside. Outside, Batwoman talks to Sophie who is clearly upset about her husband leaving her. Later, Kate questions to Luke if she's living her truth as Batwoman. Luke gives her a bomb that will isolate all technology within immediate distance outside of the hacker. Luke then reveals that he reversed engineered the hacker's video messages and figured out that it's a girl recording the messages and Kate decides to find her at Gotham Prep. Batman then rappels down during Gotham Prep's school dance and gets swarmed by teenagers who want to take selfies with Batman. Yeah, you would never ever see Batman take selfies with anybody. Not even Nightwing. Maybe Robin, but Batman, no chance. Batswoman activates the bomb and finds the hacker, a young girl named Parker Torres. She says that she was going to stop the train anyway and reveals that she orchestrated the crash to make her parents to have more sympathy for her after she was outed to them as being a lesbian. 
She argues that she'll never be represented or feel comfortable in her own skin. Alice shows up and kidnaps Parker, threatening her with a wood chip saw. Batwoman then shows up and Alice tells her to quit being a hero and take off her mask. Kate eventually does and Parker instantly recognises her and apologises. Alice tells Parker to hack all of Gotham's phones and out Kate as Batwoman, otherwise she'll kill everybody in the school. Parker refuses because she knows Gotham needs Batwoman. Parker hacks the phones but sends a distress signal instead. Alice frees Parker and Kate immediately fights her and has her subdue the bomb. The school is evacuated and Mouse sets off the bomb anyway, just as Kate saves Slam Bradley from the explosion. Parker then visits Kate at her office and Kate gives her paperwork to do community service as penance for her crimes. Kate tells Parker that things will get better and offers to be her mentor. Maybe this might lead somewhere, you never know. Luke gives Kate a cupcake for her birthday and congratulates her on reaching cover girl status. Kate pulls out a digital copy of Catco in which Batwoman comes out as a lesbian on the cover. Now also on the cover it is said that the exclusive interview was conducted by Cara Danvers so already we are seeing some little changes made to this new earth because before the events of the crisis Batwoman and Supergirl being on the same earth would not have been possible so already we're seeing that so you know I'm liking that already so Kate goes back to her office where she finds a normal Beth who has returned from study abroad Kate confronts her but she confirms that she's Beth and that's how this episode ends also in this episode we saw Alice and Mouse have a tea party on Catherine's grave Mouse arguing that killing Catherine wasn't enough to get Kate's attention, especially given her public persona as Batwoman. We also saw Mary recording a message for her Instagram account where she calls out her followers for slandering her family name. We also see Kate arrives and Mary quickly grows distant. We also see Jacob is in prison and finds a razor blade inside his food. He later takes a call from Mary who is deflecting from her emotions about Catherine's death. And we see Mary visits a scientist named Dr. Canberra who specialises in skin grafts and asks him to help testify in Jacob's trial. He turns it down and suggests that Mary might have imagined Mouse impersonating Jacob. Mary also tells Sophie about this who suggests talking to Kate. Mary then sees Alice entering Gotham University. Sophie and a squad of crows show up but don't do anything. Sophie then visits Mary who is attempting to shut down her free clinic. Sophie argues that both might not have the clarity they need right now. We also see Sophie talks to Alice in Crow's custody but Alice refused to give Mouse location. And we also see Kate visits Mary and they hug. She later calls out Jacob who wishes her a happy birthday. So this episode overall, despite what the name of the title is, I thought this episode was pretty good. And the twist at the end where we see another Beth that's Alice but as a normal person was a really good twist so the question is how could there be two Beths coexisting that is a really interesting question going forward but that's really got me pumped up to talk about the next episode which is episode 11 so I will be talking about that as well and I'm going to wrap this up now and drop this here for you guys what did you think of episode 10 of Batman. Did you think it was good? Was there anything you liked? What's your thoughts about the idea of two Beths living on the same earth? You know what to do guys. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave your thoughts and comments down below and I will see all of you next time.